Hi, it's Uncle Larry. The other day I overheard an observation about politics which I thought expressed a pretty common sentiment. The individual said, politics is just one transaction after another. It's all about transactions. It's all about cutting deals and getting reelected, period. Politicians are self-serving. Public service is a joke. That was the nub of it. Regardless of whether this is true, this seems to be how politicians are currently perceived by many voters. Now, I said the observation was common, not that I agreed with it, because I don't. First of all, when anyone says it's all about this or that, it's a red flag for me. Life is way more complex than that. Second, even if political activity is mostly transactional, is that such a bad thing? Hmm. I thought we should take a look at the concept a bit closer. Let's begin with why this negative perception of politicians exists. One of the primary reasons behind the perception of public service as merely a selfish enterprise is the pervasive influence of money in politics. This may not be as big a factor in Canada these days, but there are still suspicions of undue influence and favors exchanged behind closed doors. So money invariably comes up. Consequently, the public perceives politicians as beholden to special interests rather than representing the broader interests of their uh, constituents. Another negative factor is the relentless pursuit of electoral victory at any cost. So getting elected first or getting re-elected uh, is front and center. In an era dominated by 24-hour news cycles and social media, politicians face immense pressure to appeal to their base, often resorting to divisive rhetoric and short-term policy solutions designed to win votes rather than address long-term challenges. This hyper-partisan environment fosters a zero-sum mentality where compromise is viewed as weakness, further entrenching the uh, perception of politics as a cynical game of power and ambition. And then there's the erosion of trust in political institutions and in the media, which has fueled skepticism towards politicians, uh, their motives, their actions, uh, scandals, uh, corruption allegations, the proliferation of misinformation is amplified, especially in social media, eroding public confidence in the integrity of elected officials, reinforcing the perception of politicians as self-serving actors who are just willing to bend the truth to suit their agendas. All of this helps explain why so many feel as they do about politics. Here's the problem for me. The problem for me is that in my long career in the media, I got up close to a lot of politicians, federal, provincial, municipal, and very few of them fit the mold I've just been describing for the last two and a half minutes. They weren't like that. At least not most of them. I would say a majority entered public life with a genuine desire to do something meaningful, to make a difference in their communities. The fact that they were entering a world where making transactions and cutting deals is how things get done didn't diminish their sincerity or put a blemish on their characters. So let's turn this whole thing upside down and take a peek at some of the positives associated with a transactional approach to politics. At the heart of politics lies the art of, number one, negotiation. Legislators must engage in dialogue and bargaining to reconcile conflicting viewpoints and advance legislation that reflects the diverse needs and preferences of their constituents. Negotiation fosters common ground and crafts solutions that are acceptable to differing points of view. Another feature of transactional politics lies in the willingness to, number two, compromise. In a pluralistic society where individuals and groups hold divergent beliefs and interests, achieving overall agreement on every issue is, let's face it, impossible. Compromise requires elected officials to prioritize objectives, make concessions, and find middle ground to move forward. While compromise may entail accepting outcomes that fall short of getting everything you want, okay, in incremental progress on pressing issues can actually take place, and it does. It's how it works, folks. And compromise is the opposite of weakness. It takes determination. Finally, from my perspective, the most important feature of transactional politics embodies the principle of three, pragmatism. While ideological purity may appeal to certain factions within the political spectrum, usually the extremes, um, effective governing requires a pragmatic approach 
that prioritizes achievable outcomes over ideological purity. Pragmatic politicians recognize the need to navigate the constraints of the real world, adapt to changing circumstances, and pursue incremental reforms that yield tangible benefits for their voters. By rejecting dogma and embracing evidence-based policymaking, pragmatic leaders can deliver results that improve the lives of ordinary citizens. Now, a lot of this, the art of negotiation, the art of compromise, the principle of pragmatism, is a matter of common sense, and people are yearning to see it. The negative perception of politicians isn't being fueled by them being too transactional. Negative perceptions are the result of the uncompromising inflexibility of ideological extremists who are trying to hijack the system and replace it with their authoritarian alternative. Do you want a path towards a more equitable, inclusive, and prosperous future that has the best shot at including everybody? Well, it's not going to happen overnight, and it won't be perfect, and you won't get everything you want. But in a democracy, making transactions, cutting deals, and accepting trade-offs is how it all works. It's how it happens. And individual politicians may not be perfect either, but in my experience, most of them, no matter what party they may represent, don't fit the unfair stereotypes above them. This may be unpopular, but I still believe there is dignity in public service.